Welcome back everyone. In previous videos I've shown you Lewis structures of various compounds just to remind you what they look like. And in those covalent compounds we had shared valence electrons represented as a straight line and unshared electrons represented as dots. In this video we're going to review the method by which we generate a Lewis structure. Now before I start, I just want to say there are different ways that different people and different sources you will see break this process apart. I'm using six steps, but you might see it in a textbook somewhere where it's only written as five steps, or perhaps someone has written it as seven. Six seems to be about right, to be detailed enough, but not so long that people have difficulty memorizing the steps. So as we go through each of these steps, I'm going to put them into practice by working on this anion right here, the cyanide anion, CN with a minus charge. So let's get started. We're going to draw the Lewis structure of the cyanide anion. Step one says, write the formula. Well, that's already written. It's a CN minus. And draw the skeleton with the least electronegative atom in the center. So we need to identify the least electronegative atom, and we're going to call that the central atom. So looking at carbon and nitrogen, we have to decide which of those is less electronegative. So looking on our periodic table, you may recall that fluorine has the highest electronegativity with a 4.0, and we lose a half a point every column that we take a step back. So the closer that we are to fluorine, the more electronegative we are. Carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5. Nitrogen has an electronegativity of 3.0. So carbon is less electronegative. So carbon, being less electronegative, is going to be defined as our central atom. So we draw our central atom. And that central atom is going to be the atom to which all of the other atoms are bonded. In this case, there's only one other atom, but that's okay. Carbon will still be considered the central atom. And when it says draw the skeleton, we are just going to draw a single bond. There's two electrons right there in that bond. From the central atom to what we call the outer or terminal atoms. So I've just drawn sort of the skeletal structure the skeleton of this Lewis structure. If there were other terminal atoms, for example, if there were three or four nitrogens in this, I would draw a single bond to each one of those nitrogens. But by having identified carbon as the central atom, that is the atom to which all of the other atoms are bonded. So it's the center of the wheel, and all of the other bonds are spokes of the wheel leading out to the outer or terminal atoms. Now there's one important exception to this, and that is hydrogen can never be bonded to more than one atom. So that means that hydrogen cannot be a central atom with more than one bond to it, because it's limited to only having one bond. Okay, I've finished step one. I've drawn the skeletal structure of the Lewis structure with the least electronegative atom, which is carbon, in the center. So I'm treating carbon as my central atom. Step two, count all the valence electrons that are available. And don't forget to add or subtract if it's an ion, because we've either added or subtracted one or more electrons. So let's do that. We're going to do our math here on the side. So for carbon, how many valence electrons does carbon have? Well, remember carbon right here. How many valence electrons does carbon have? We're not talking total electrons, but valence electrons. So carbon has six protons and six total electrons, but it does not have six valence electrons. For valence electrons, in the n equals two row, carbon has these two, the 2s2, two and carbon has two more, the 2p2. Two so carbon has four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. And to that we're going to add the valence electrons from a nitrogen. 
How many valence electrons does nitrogen have? One, two, three, four, five. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. And since this is an ion with a negative charge, remember this is a cyanide ion with a negative charge, that negative charge means that the cluster of the carbon and nitrogen has gained an extra electron. So I'm going to add one. So my total valence electrons that I have available here are four and five, and one is 10 valence electrons total. I have 10 total valence electrons that I'm going to distribute in this species. Notice here in step two, it says subtract two valence electrons for each bond in the skeletal structure. I have a bond here in the skeletal structure, which means I have already used two of my valence electrons for that bond. So since I've already used those two valence electrons, I'm going to subtract them from my total available. And now I have eight valence electrons remaining that need to be distributed in this Lewis structure. So now I go to step three. Use the remaining electrons to fill the octets of the terminal or outer atoms. Terminal means outer. So I'm going to use whatever electrons I have left, and I'm first going to place them around the terminal or outer atoms. And I do this generally in pairs. So remember that carbon was identified as my central atom because it's less electronegative than nitrogen. So nitrogen is my only terminal atom. So I have eight valence electrons, and I'm going to start putting them in pairs around the terminal atoms in order to satisfy their octets. So there's two, there's four, there's six, and I've used six of these, and I've filled the octet of my terminal atom. Nitrogen cannot exceed the octet, so I can put no more electrons on nitrogen. So I've used six more of my valence electrons, and I have two left. Step four, use any electrons left over on the central atom. I have two electrons left over. I'll put them somewhere on the central atom. I could have put them on the top or on the bottom, but I'll just put them there. So it's obvious that they're associated with carbon. Now you may notice, uh, let, let me go ahead and subtract these two. So I have no valence electrons left to distribute. They are all distributed. So now you'll notice something. This nitrogen has a filled octet, so it is electronically stable. This carbon only has one, two, three, four electrons around it, and so it is not stable. So that leads us to step five. If the central atom's octet is still not satisfied, and that's the case here, carbon's octet is not satisfied, then we move one or more pairs of electrons from the terminal atoms so that they're shared by the central atom. So we're going to move an electron pair from here, and we're going to put it right there so that it's shared. You can think of this step as shift to share. So we're going to shift a pair of electrons to share them. So that this pair of electrons is no longer going to be a, a pair of dots on the nitrogen, unshared, we're going to move them now to have them shared by that carbon. Nitrogen can still claim them. Nitrogen can still count them in its octet. Two, four, six, eight. So nitrogen is still octet satisfied. Carbon is doing better now. Instead of only having four, it now has two, four, six. So it's getting closer. Still not there. Carbon still is not octet satisfied. 
So we have to do it again. I'll take a pair here and I'll shift to share like so. Nitrogen is still octet satisfied. Two, four, six, eight. And now so is carbon. Two, four, six, eight. So this is the arrangement of the valence electrons in the cyanide anion. Finally, if the species is an ion, which this is, then brackets and its charge must, must be written out. So I put brackets around the whole species to show that this whole species has a charge. Now if I had written this in pencil, I would have erased these two dots here and these two dots here. But since I wrote in pen, I just marked them out so that you can see that those are no longer unshared electrons on the nitrogens. So there's the, the Lewis structure. And if I were to write it out neatly, it would look like that. So those are the steps to draw a Lewis structure from the formula. So you go through each of these steps in turn. Don't forget any steps. Don't jump over any steps. Make sure that you follow each one. Steps number five and six may not need to be included. That will depend on whether the central atom's octet is satisfied and whether you're dealing with an ion. So with that in mind, I have another example down here, and I would like for you to do this. This example is the IF4 with a positive charge polyatomic cation. Now this cation is not one of the 34 that I've asked you to know, but I want you to go ahead and draw its Lewis structure. Follow the same procedure. Follow each of these steps step by step. So pause the video, work through that, draw the Lewis structure for IF4 positive charge, and when you're done, resume the video and I will work through that. All right, coming back to this, we're going to draw the Lewis structure for IF4 with a positive charge on it, following our steps. So first it says, write the formula and draw the skeleton or the skeletal structure with the least electronegative atom in the center. So we know that the formula, it's already written here, but I'll go ahead and write it out here just to model good practice, IF4 with a positive charge. So which is less electronegative, iodine or fluorine? Well, we already know that fluorine is the most electronegative, right? So we don't even need to look at our periodic table or look up the values for electronegativities because I know that fluorine is the most electronegative of all of the elements. So iodine is going to be less electronegative, so therefore iodine is going to be my central atom. And the fluorines will be my terminal or outer atoms. So I just write them equally arranged and then draw a single bond. And that is the skeletal structure. We call it the skeletal structure because it's just the bones. I haven't put all the other valence electrons. I haven't done the shift to share if necessary and so forth. So this is just a skeletal structure of the Lewis structure. It is not yet completed. So I am finished with step one. Step two, count all the valence electrons available and don't forget to add or subtract if it's an ion. So I want to see your math because I want to be able to check your math to see if you've made any mistakes in, in reasoning as you do this. So for iodine, how many valence electrons do I have? Well, hopefully you're getting an idea of the pattern here. Depending on its column, that will tell you how many valence electrons you have. Remember, we're not talking about total electrons. We're talking about just valence electrons, the number of electrons in its outermost n value. For iodine, that includes these two, the 5s2, and five more from the 5p12345. So iodine, and indeed any element in this column 17 right here, has seven valence electrons. And you'll notice that it agrees with this Roman numeral up here, seven valence electrons, okay? So does fluorine. Fluorine also has seven valence electrons. So the iodine brings seven valence electrons. I have four fluorines, so I've got to include all of them. Four times fluorine equals four times seven. 
which is 28 more valence electrons in this structure. And it is a positively charged ion. It has a plus one charge, which means I have lost an electron. So if I lose an electron, that means I subtract one. So 7 plus 28 is 35, and I subtract 1 from 35 equals 34 valence electrons total. That's how many valence electrons I will have to be able to distribute in this Lewis structure. And step 2 says subtract 2 valence electrons for each bond that you've already drawn in the skeletal structure because we've already used some valence electrons. We've used two, four, six, eight. So we've used eight valence electrons just to draw the skeletal structure. So I've already used those eight, which means I have 26 left to distribute. Step three says use those remaining electrons to fill the octets of the terminal atoms, or the outer atoms. So I have 26 electrons, and I'm going to use them first to fill, satisfy the octets of the outer, more electronegative atoms. Because they're the more electronegative atoms, and they want the electrons first. I'm going to do this evenly and in pairs. Evenly distributed and in pairs. 26 electrons. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And now I have satisfied the octets of my terminal atoms by using 24 electrons. So I have two electrons left over after I have done this step. So I have Finished step three, used the remaining electrons to fill the octets of the terminal atoms. Now I move to step four, use any electrons left over and put them on the central atom. I have two electrons left over. Where do they go? Step four tells me to put them on the central atom. So I'm just going to put them right here so it's obvious that they are associated with that central atom, the iodine. Now you might notice here that iodine now has more than eight electrons around it. Two, four, six, eight. And the unshared pair is 10. But remember, there are some atoms that can exceed eight by going as high as 12 if they are in the third row or lower and they are acting as a central atom. So iodine is definitely in the third row or lower and it is acting as a central atom. So iodine doesn't have to have more than eight, but in this particular species, it does. It has 10. So I've used those two electrons, and there are none left. So I have distributed all of my valence electrons for that Lewis structure. Step five, if the central atom's octet is still not satisfied, well, we don't have to do this because the central atom, iodine, is more than octet satisfied. It's got 10 electrons. So we don't need to shift to share any electron pairs to make double or triple bonds here. Moving on to step six. Finally, if the species is an ion, then brackets and the charge must be written out. So this is indeed an ion. So we have to have brackets and we have to have the charge. And there is the Lewis structure for the IF4 plus ion. Notice that there is no three-dimensionality shown here. Everything is shown just as flat and in the plane of the paper. Because this is a Lewis structure. Lewis structures are not concerned about wedges and dashes or any sort of three-dimensional geometry. Everything is just drawn out flat with straight lines for shared electrons, dots, for unshared electrons. And those are the steps for how to draw a Lewis structure.